Strengthen your miter joints with a simple spline jig. A normal mitered corner lacks the long grain to long grain contact needed for a strong joint. It'll usually hold together for a little while, but it's weak and probably won't survive seasonal changes. You can make the joint rock solid and add a design element at the same time by adding splines across the miters. This is the only time in woodworking where you're allowed to cut corners. In next week's video, we tackle everything else related to picture frames. First, I'm going to cut a 16 inch strip so that it's just a little bit more manageable. Then I cut a 10 inch piece from that strip. This will be the main part of the spline jig that the frame rests up against. Now we need to create the arm so it gives it that gliding motion. Measure and cut two pieces that are equal to your table saw's width and the height. All right, so I'm gonna to have to measure my height to actually be above these bolts that I have no idea what they do. I'm guessing holds everything together. And this little tabby thing in the back because otherwise <laughs> I'm not cutting a very big spline. All right, one inch for accurate measurement, two and a half for my table saw fence height, three quarters of an inch for my board thickness, plus an inch and a half because that's how far my blade is away from the side guard. So I have a spot to put my rip fence thingy. Why don't you just do this on the table saw? I don't know. Now that we got all of the boards cut and ready to go, I did go ahead and take my board, put it onto the bottom. And since this was going to be my back because it's got a little yuck on there, I went ahead, drew a line, and then I could take the thickness of this board, draw another line. So I knew the threshold that I would be able to put screws into this board. And I did the same with this one. So this is going to be the back. So then I just went ahead drew my line, knew where my screw holes would go. And if you look, none of the screw holes line up with each other because since this is pretty thin, I do want to get into a good amount of meat with these. So I'm going to use a longer screw and I didn't want them to touch in the center. So bing, bang, boom. That's how she's going to look when she's done. Now that I actually know where this board is going to go, just figure out which one I want to be the top. Doesn't matter, that guy doesn't have any lines on him bottom and I'm just gonna apply a good amount of super glue to him just to give me an extra tight bond Wasn't anywhere near ready. I have a little bit of instant bond spray, but it is honestly not a lot. All right, we're gonna leave him set up like this for like a fiver. And as everything was setting up, I did go ahead and take that 16th inch drill bit and pile it into the center board, just that way it didn't split out the plywood later on. And then I went ahead and added a Forstner bit and just drilled down about a quarter of an inch just to countersink my Craig screws so that way this very front piece could be nice and flush. Now, with everything set up, I did go ahead and take the clamps off, finished throwing the screws into there. Um, it's, it's a little tight. So how you can actually fix that is by taking it off, throwing a piece of sandpaper on a scrap board, and then you're just gonna sand it until it fits. In my case, I have quite a bit of sanding, so. Now that it is smooth over at the table saw fence, you're gonna go ahead and find the center of your jig's front. Put a pencil on there, and then lightly score a line diagonally up on both sides. That is gonna give you a true 45. I have this piece of red oak that I'm just going to go ahead and chop in half, and you guys know how I can't resist rounded corners. Yeah. Bam! I'm getting a evil villainy crab looking thing. I don't know. So I did only round the bottoms of my corners because if I had rounded off the tops, that you're not going to see that. That'll give this less surface area for your picture frame to sit in. 
and that's no bueno. So I only did the bottom just so I have that full surface area. See ya. So I did go ahead and just move them up so that it's away from the table saw blade so I'm not garring up my new jig. And that's probably about as tall as I would ever be cutting a spline down into one of these picture frames anyway. There we go. Here's the conundrum. Either I'm going to sand the bottom piece and then glue these on, which once I sanded it, my lines will be gone, or I'm going to glue these on and then sand it, but then I'm going to have two boards to work around. I'm going to have two boards to work around because I'd rather it be more precise. So again, just a little bit of super glue. That's just so we can get stuff done today. If you want to use a wood glue, you can and clamp it. Perfectly 90 degrees. Now, again, I am just going to go ahead and pile it in two screws into these guys, just so that way they are held into place. I'm going to go ahead and go probably in two inches into both. Just make sure you're dodging this section. That way you're not cruising through one of the screws you just put in for the back. And you know I love eyeballing stuff, so... Get those guys has centered. Put a different drill under there to hold everything up. And these do not have to be piloted down. I only piloted these down just to make sure they were not in the way of the picture frame. All right, sand her down, and there's a spline jig. You can also add some blue tape if you get it off Kelter and it's not perfect on your table saw fence. I added a line of blue tape to mine. Well, we're almost done. So with our jig, I am going to mount a clamp onto here, which I am using the same clamp I had used for the table saw jig. They are wonderful jigs. It's the first time I used them, and now they're going to incorporate my entire life. So with this guy, I'm going to go ahead and just mount it over the screw spots just because there's a little void right here. And I do want it to be within four inches because when I have the piece turned like this, four inches to my turn, and that'd be the smallest frame I'm probably going to be making as a four by six. So I do want it to still function. So it would clamp here. And again, once I had the other clamp, it would still be holding it anyway, but I just want a little bit extra protection. I almost made the mistake of putting it on the inside because I have this big void spot, but I don't want to have to fight with getting my picture frame off. And also, if you have a thicker piece of material, now the clamp either is going to be in the way or it's got to be so far back that it's, again, an issue with the smaller ones. And I need it to work for both. So anything that's going to be a wider border and a smaller frame. This one is a five by seven. So again, there is the size smaller. So by mounting it just right here, I'll be perfect. And then if it's a bigger frame, you can always slide this guy out. You can move him up, down, again. All kinds of options with these guys. Now, if you don't want to mount one of these clamps or you just want to go a little bit cheap, I think they're like three bucks, guys. They're not over the top. Check this guy out. I made this for you guys. So when you have your piece, this is just a scrap piece of wood. I didn't have a big one. So when I have my piece in here, you can just cut out a void with like a two inch hole saw, connect them with a jigsaw. And then that way you'd be able to slide your clamps in here and then clamp it down from the opposite side. And that would hold your work piece as well when you're going across. To mount this guy, I'm just going to go ahead and mark the spots that I want to pre-drill with a 16th inch drill bit and then screw it in with some screws that have washers on them. Clamp your frame inside the jig and raise your blade to the desired height. Make sure you are not going to cut through the rabbit or your jig. If your spline is cut to the same width as your table saw blade, you will need to use this equation to find out where to set your fence. Otherwise, whatever thickness you'd like your spline to be, Use this equation.
So if you wanted a one quarter inch spline in a three quarter inch thick frame, you would set your fence to three quarters inch plus three eighths to find the center minus one eighth for the spline. Cut all four corners and if you'd centered it perfectly and that is how wide you want your spline to be, you are done. Otherwise, if you had the back facing you, now we're gonna flip it over so the front is facing you and you are going to cut that again so that way your spline is centered in your frame. I wake up in teardrops that fall down like rain. I put on that old song we dance to and then. One thing your table saw might do is leave these little bat ear looking things like mine do. And that's because you have a combination saw blade. Majority of combination blades use an alternating tooth bezel ATB. This is to help remove material. For clean 90 degree corners, you will need to find and purchase a flat top grind FTD blade, or you can use a chisel or just a smaller piece of material with some sandpaper to clean out your splines. Your combination squares blade also works perfectly for this. I found it far easier to cut the slot for my spline and then take the board that I want to use as the spline, cut two or three inches into the board and test my fit to ensure the perfect size you can cut off that section you ripped and shove it in there instead of just eyeballing it. You can either cut your spline so they're little cute triangles that fit almost perfectly in there with a little bit to cut off later, or you can just go ahead and leave them kind of chunky. I prefer to leave them kind of chunky. Apply some glue and tap them into place. Just don't tap too hard. There's a reason that we're adding the spline. And I exploded my first picture frame. Let them dry and use a flush cut saw to trim off the extra. I also learned that if you sand this side too much, I sanded mine pretty close to a sixteenth of an inch. It was very tight, as you saw. It really throws off that equation because this is now not three quarters of an inch. And now your frame is much more structurally sound and sexy. You guys watched me build this frame. I stole all this hardware from another picture frame I had bought because I wanted actual glass in it. 